Of course, both teams in that chase for the AL pennant. The Astros currently the favorites, uh, according to our friends at Caesars, plus 155. The Rays currently holding the top wild card spot in the American League are fifth at 50 to 1. All right, let's get into how missing Verlander could affect the Astros' weekend series with Anaheim. MLB analyst, World Series champion Will Middlebrooks here to help us with that. Uh, Will, the Astros have the best record in the American League. They started the season by taking three of four from the Angels, but Angels are playing some good baseball right now. What kind of an impact could not having Verlander mean for them this weekend? Well, anytime you don't have a guy who's probably going to win the AL Cy Young, it's going to affect your team a little bit. Now, is it going to affect their season? No, not at all. This is right calf soreness, really. I mean, the MRI was very optimistic. No muscle fiber disruption is what they called it, which means for, for you and I, that means no strain was, was visible, no pull, nothing wrong with the Achilles or calf. Uh, so this is a soreness thing. And this is just a veteran pitcher who knows his body. He's been through this before. Um, and he knows if this is sore and I pitch through it, I might hurt it worse. So right now, while we have an 11 game lead in our division, we're probably going to the playoffs. So I'm going to take two starts off now, be good to go at the end of September, be ready to go even more once you hit October and they're able to get in that deep playoff run. What? How impressive is this guy, by the way? 39 years old. He's coming off Tommy John this late in his career, and he's going to win an AL Cy Young. Most likely win an AL Cy Young. Unbelievable. What about McClanahan? A little bit more concerned there because it's a shoulder impingement in his throwing shoulder. Yeah, so shoulder impingement, it, it, it's very common. I, I dealt with this throughout my career. I had labrum issues early on, later on in my career. But impingement, is it, it's very painful. It affects not only your velocity, but your control because of the pain and lack of mobility. Um, what helped me the most was I got a cortisone shot uh, and, and had a couple weeks off. It took the inflammation out, and I was good to go. Now, unless there's something structurally wrong that the, the team isn't uh, releasing information on and telling us what's wrong with it. I think he'll be good to go in a couple weeks. He needs a little rest. He will have to throw a little more than a position player had to. I could, he can't just take two weeks off. He'll take a week off probably, hopefully get that shot, feel better. This is a Tampa Bay team that has dealt with injuries all year. Now, their development uh, system, uh, their scouting system uh, in the minor league, they just keep spitting out players that we have no idea who they are. They're the 200-ranked prospect in baseball, yet they come up and, and they're productive at the big league level because this is just what the Rays do. Now, they're just six games back in a division now after the Yankees collapse over the last 40 games. Uh, so they have a chance, a real chance, if the Yankees continue this, to, to win the division, which is I, I can't even believe I'm talking about right now. But you said earlier they're atop the wild card race with Seattle. It's a very good chance to do that. And if they're lucky, which it seems like they are, McClanahan will be back at the end of September and ready to go for the postseason. A two-game lead when it comes to the wild card chase. All right, the Dodgers didn't win the game last night, dropped two of three versus the Mets. But the silver lining was the return of Clayton Kershaw Thursday. He was efficient through five innings, allowing one hit, one earned run, while walking three batters and striking out six. So how big is it for the Dodgers to get Kershaw back in in the flow? Yeah, this is massive. I mean, the, the Kershaw return, considering the timing of the forearm injury to Tony Gonsolin, uh, which, by the way, is I, I thought initially was, you know, kind of like a Verlander. He's sore. Let's give him some time off. He's throwing a lot of innings. You don't say an arm injury when you just want to give him time off. It's a calf or a hamstring or a back or something, you know, something like that. So this is looking less and less optimistic every day that passes, and he's not playing catch. I know they're resting it because a forearm injury, you got to be really careful. It can turn to elbow, and then Tommy John, you have to be really careful with the history of forearm injuries. Uh, but this rotation's been beat up all year. I mean, you lose Walker Bueller for the year. He has to get his second Tommy John, so he'll be out next year as well. So, yes, the Kershaw addition lengthens their rotation, uh, along with Dustin May coming back, who at what has missed the past year and a half with Tommy John. He's been lights out since he returned. Tyler Anderson has been unbelievable. He's had a hit. He's had a huge boost to that staff with the year he's had. But if you look forward to the postseason, they really need Gonsolin to be helped. A rotation of him, Kershaw, Arias, and Tyler Anderson is, it puts them in a good position to win with that offense and that bullpen that is on and off healthy and unhealthy. They have a month to figure it out. Blake Trining coming back. Gratterall went on the IL recently. A uh, lot of question marks with them right now. But um, overall, uh, Kershaw coming back. Huge boost, especially in the postseason. All right, let's get some quick hitters and some games this weekend. We're talking with the Dodgers. They face the Padres. Three games set. Three games set. Dustin May versus Hugh Darvish for the opener. Hosts minus 165 on the money line. Total at eight. What kind of play do you like here, Will? Yeah, I, yeah, I like the Dodgers to win it. I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm not laying 165 at all. Um, you know, and you look at the run line. That's tempting at plus 122. 
but it's just one of those games I feel like it's a little more even than the odds show. And if there's not an, an absolute advantage, I'm not going to take a run line pick. So I'm going to go you Darvish over five and a half hits allowed. Uh, he, he's gone over that number in three of his last five starts. The Do- Against the Dodgers this year, he's gone over that number two out of three starts. For some reason, the Dodgers just see him really well. Even when they make outs, they're loud. They hit the ball really hard against them. Uh, despite only giving up 17 home runs this season, four of those have come to the Dodgers. So, like I said, they hit them hard. They see them well. I think they can get six hits against them. All right. Uh, Will, if the baseball season ended today, the Philadelphia Phillies would end their decade-long postseason drought. But season doesn't end today, and Milwaukee may still have something to say about that in the wildcard race. Phillies face the Giants this weekend as slight underdogs. Opener has a total of eight. What's your play? I like the under. I do. I like the, the total set at eight. I like the under here. The Giants were one of the absolute worst run scoring teams in baseball in the month of August. They were 27th in runs scored, only better than the Nationals, the A's, and the Marlins. They hit 222 as a team, and they're facing today, they're facing Kyle Gibson, who's allowed uh, two runs or less in five of his seven games since the All-Star break, so he's throwing the ball really well. And then for the Giants, Alex Cobb on the bump, he's been two different pitchers this year. On the road, he has over a five ERA, but at home, a 2.86 ERA. And let me just add, playing night games at Oracle Park in San Francisco, that marine layer comes in at night. You hit a fly ball, you think's going a couple rows deep and it gets caught on the track. It just doesn't fly as well. That, that plays even more into this, um, uh, this under pick. Great stuff as always. World Series champion Will Middlebrook's giving us some of his plays for another important baseball weekend. Thanks, Will, great to see you. There are only four regular season weekends left after this one. 2022 baseball season. Four. Yeah, you get a few notable games. We didn't discuss sliding Yankees. They try to do something they haven't done since 2019, win a series against Tampa Bay. Our Yankees coming off a 10 and 18 month of August, their worst winning percentage since September of 1991. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.